Is there a tax on television in Germany? Is it allowed to say swear words on the radio? And is public broadcasting a state broadcaster? And what does the BBC have to do with it? Let's take a look at this in our video on public broadcasting in Germany. In 1861, Johann Philipp Reis developed a device to transmit speech by wire, what we later known as telephone. David Edward Hughes achieved wireless Morse transmission for the first time in 1892. Marconi even managed this across the Atlantic in 1901. Then this progressed rapidly and by 1909 Charles David Harold was regularly transmitting messages by radio in San Jose, California. From September the 1st, 1922 Regular business messages were sent on Langwelle by the Reichspostministerium for banks and commercial enterprises in the German Reich. The recipients needed special equipment for this. Almost exactly 101 years ago, on October 29, 1923, the first civil broadcast was aired in Germany. Here is the original wording. Achtung, Achtung. Meine Damen und Herren, wir machen Ihnen davon Mitteilung, dass am heutigen Tage der Unterhaltung Rundfunkdienst mit Verbreitung von Musikvorführungen auf drahtlos telefonischem Wege beginnt. Die Benutzung ist genehmigungspflichtig. The Vox Building was the headquarter of the Vox Record Company. But even then there was a problem. Money. In 1923, the German Reich was in a serious crisis. There was a lack of money everywhere. At the same time, listeners needed the license to receive the program. Well, you could receive it with a radio, with the receiver, but without a license, it wasn't actually allowed. A broadcasting license cost 60 gold marks or 780 billion marks at the time of hyperinflation before the Reichsmark was introduced a year later. If you want to take a look at the history of currencies in Germany, here is a link to my video. At that time there were 250 licensed listeners of the program. When the price was reduced to two Reichsmark per month in 1924, the number of licensed listeners increased. After the Funkstunde AG, eight more private radio stations were founded by 1924. The umbrella organization of these regional companies was the Reichsrundfunkgesellschaft, RRG. There was also Deutsche Welle GmbH, which could be received throughout Germany. The shareholder of the RRG was the Reichspost. Later it was also a 51% shareholder in all regional broadcasters. In principle, the stations were to be independent of party politics and broadcast news, politics, culture, entertainment and advertising. Politics did not interfere in broadcasting during the Weimar Republic. This changed fundamentally when the National Socialists came to power. All radio station employees who had a different political opinion were dismissed. Josef Goebbels wanted to use radio to influence the masses and had the Volksempfänger, people receiver, a simple radio receiver built so that every citizen could follow the propaganda. In the course of the war, a warning was even added that listening to foreign stations was a crime and could be punished with prison sentences. In fact, Reich Justice Minister Franz Gürtner, for example, was against the threat of punishment because it could be interpreted as a lack of trust by the government in its people and a lack of confidence. Since ardent Nazi lived in every neighborhood and sometimes in the family this danger was real and there were even at least 11 death sentences for listening to enemy stations. Despite all the threats, however, up to 15 million Germans probably listened to the BBC. From March 22, 1935, the first television station with a regular program was even broadcast from Berlin. 
After the war, the Reichsrundfunkgesellschaft was liquidated. Now the Allies were faced with a problem. Radio and television had become an integral part of the modern media landscape. At the same time, the Nazis had shown how this could be abused when the state had all the power and sole influence. The Americans set up broadcasting stations in Munich, Frankfurt am Main, Stuttgart and Bremen, the Soviets in Berlin, the British in Hamburg and the French in Baden-Baden. At a meeting in Copenhagen, in 1948, the broadcasting frequencies were redisputed and Germany was deliberately disadvantaged by receiving poor, long and medium wave frequencies. As a result, radio in Germany had to look for other options and switch to ultra short wave, which in retrospective had a positive effect on the radio broadcasting. Between 1948 and 1949, the military broadcasters in West Germany were then converted into state broadcasters under public law. These stations were now given a remit similar to that of the BBC. The fee for this continued to be collected by the post office, now the Bundespost. In June 1950, the state broadcasters merged to form the Arbeitsgemeinschaft der öffentlich-rechtlichen Rundfunkanstalten in Deutschland, Association of Public Broadcasters in Germany, ARD for short. However, the then federal chancellor Konrad Adenauer wanted more influence from the federal government and less from the federal states, and later even founded Deutschland Fernsehen GmbH in order to have his own nationwide television station. But this violated the basic law and was banned by the Federal Constitutional Court on December 17, 1960. From June 1961 to March 1963 there was even the ARD2 program until the Zweites Deutsches Fernsehen, Second German Television, ZDF for short, went on air on 1st of April 1963, on which the federal states had agreed. The economic miracle brought more televisions into households and therefore more views. Third channels were then offered from 1964. Lower Saxony had NDR, Norddeutscher Rundfunk, North Rhine-Westphalia had WDR, Westdeutscher Rundfunk and Bavaria had BR, Bayerischer Rundfunk. So there was a regional broadcaster with a regionally different program, while ARD and ZDF had some advertising between 1800 and 2000, these third channels were free of advertising. In 1967, color television was also made possible. In addition to television, the ARD broadcasters also offer radio stations between 4 and 11 programs in the areas plus Deutschland Radio, a nationwide broadcaster with three programs. That DF only had the television program. The Bundesverfassungsgericht Federal Constitutional Court has dealt with broadcasting 12 times to date. In 1961 it banned the Adenauer Broadcaster. In 1971 a decision on value-added tax. Then in 1981 a decision on dual broadcasting. Although a state broadcaster could not be reconciled with freedom of broadcasting, private broadcasters could not be excluded either. In the 1980s there were initial private radio stations and then from 1984 private television starting with the predecessor of Sat1 and RTL. In 1991 the first pay TV station Premiere was launched and there was a number of rulings on the financing of public broadcasters. Initially, the Postal Service had collected the fee, but in 1986, the Federal Administrative Court made it clear that the regulation of broadcasting fee was a matter of the Federal States and not the Postal Office. In 1973, the Gebühren Einzugszentrale Fee Collection Center, GEZ, was founded by ARD, ZDF and Deutschland Radio to collect the fees. At that time, a slightly higher fee was collected for a television than for a radio, and every household member with their own income had to pay a fee. So the fee was for being able to receive the programs. At the time, there were freelance fee investigators who searched for illegal views and received a commission in return. The model was then changed in 2012. 
since then there is no longer a broadcasting fee but a broadcasting contribution. This meant two changes. Firstly, every household now had to pay a uniform contribution no longer per person with income in the household and secondly it was now a contribution similar to the contribution of a health insurance fund. This gives you the opportunity to use the service but you also have to pay if you don't use it. Since all programs were now available via internet it was no longer necessary to connect to a radio or television. So yes, in Germany you pay a contribution for public broadcasting but no tax. This is not unusual in other countries either. The BBC or the ORF in Austria are also financed by fees. In France, France Television is financed by tax monies. In the USA the public broadcasting service is mainly financed by donations. The amount of the contribution is determined by the Commission zur Ermittlung des Finanzbedarfs der Rundfunkanstalten, Commission for the Determination of the Financial Requirements of the Broadcasting Organizations, KEF, in accordance with the 1994 decision. The advantage of contribution financing is independence from the state and the government. This was important in order to ensure that the situation of the Nazis could never be repeated. In the Interstate Broadcasting Treaty, corresponding tasks for public broadcasters such as information, education and entertainment were laid down. The Tagesschau, for example, is a new source that Germans trust the most. In recent years, some have accused the ORR of only representing the government's opinion and, for example, portraying the AFD in a bad light. In the reporting of Corona, however, far too many Corona doubters were invited to talk shows so that it sometimes looked as if half of the people had doubts about the disease or the measures. There is also a difference between a news program reporting and classifying governmental decisions and new laws. This is often the point of criticism for radical parties, as their demands do not stand up to scrutiny and they therefore naturally do not want their demands to be scrutinized. Anyone who has ever watched programs such as Die Anstalt or the Heute Show on ZDF, Panorama, Report München or Monitor on RD will also see a lot of criticism to the state or federal governments. A very nice format from 1993 to 2000 was Frontal with Bodo H. Hauser and Ulrich Kienzle. They were two journalists and supporter of the CDU and SPD, respectively, and always showed the views of both major parties in the program. The broadcasting councils of the broadcasters, the Television Council of ZDF and the Radio Council at Deutschlandradio, monitor the balance and direction. These bodies have between 26 Radio Bremen and 47 SWR members who are delegated by various organizations. These include trade unions, churches, women's associations and political groups. It is intended to represent a cross-section of the population and the members are appointed for four at ZDF to six years at MDR. However, there is also criticism of these committees that too many politicians are represented on them or that the two Christian churches are represented but atheists or other religions are not. However, there is currently a change in ORR. The KEF has recommended a new increase in the contribution of 58 cents to 18 euro 94 per month from 2025 but some federal states have rejected this. The federal states want to reform the ORR and structure it more efficiently. In the past, various broadcasters have been criticized for their use of funds, from lavish construction projects to incorrect billing. The flawless facade of public broadcasters has been tarnished. There are currently two multilingual broadcasters, such as Arte, a broadcaster in association with France, or Dreisat, a broadcaster in association with Austria and Switzerland. In addition to Das Erste, ARD, also has the educational channel ARD Alpha, One, Tagesschau 24, and the internet channel Funk for the young audience. ZDF also has ZDF Info and ZDF Neo, also for the younger audience. 
the children's channel Kika, Dreisat and Arte as well as Phoenix as a news channel are joint productions of ARD and 30F. In radio, the ARD broadcasters alone have 69 radio stations plus Deutschland Radio with three programs. In future, this offering is to be reduced by a few special interest channels on television and only one multinational cultural channel, as well as a reduction in the number of radio stations. The question is whether the federal states are doing this because they want to save money or because the populist party's aversion to public broadcasters had led them to stoop to their level and act populistically. So they are not state broadcasters? In fact, there is one state broadcaster that is financed by taxpayers' money, Deutsche Welle, DW. This is a foreign broadcaster of the federal government, which also broadcasts its program in the national language of the country, depending on the region. Here on YouTube, DW is very popular. And what about the swear words? It is more likely that something will be made unrecognizable if it could be an advertisement, then there will be a beep over a swear word. Whether if it's a swear word or a bare breast has less to do with the broadcaster than with the broadcasting time and the FSK approval. If children and young people can handle it in the context, it can also be seen and heard in the early evening program. Perhaps I should make a video about FSK. When I've done it, I'll link it here. But before the video gets any longer, I'll stop for today. So if you want to take a look, ARD and ZTF also have a media library where you can watch a lot of things again, but depending on the type, the office can remain online for a maximum of 12 to 24 months. Arte also regularly re-uploads its content here. I'll upload this video now. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next video.